What about this new album? Why you wait so many years to release it? We didn't wait. We were busy. We were working. So we put out a record, and then we go on tour for two years. Mm -hmm. Africa, Middle East, South America, Australia, Asia, Europe. We were working for two years after I'm With You. Then we took a small break, and then we started writing new songs. Then Flea broke his elbow. Then we wrote some more songs. Then we went and recorded the songs. Then we... And now it's out. We weren't waiting. We were working. Um, my feelings are very emotional about it, you know. Um, I feel like as a band, the thing that is most important to me is that we continue to grow and to change and like giving birth, you know, to make something new every time. And I feel like we've managed to do that, you know. And it took a lot of, you know, a lot of work and a lot of um, willingness to get out of our comfort zone and to make ourselves vulnerable. But um, we did it. And so, you know, it's funny. It's like, you know, when you make a record, it's very, for a long time, it's our music, you know. We're writing it, it's our music. We're playing it together, it's our music. We're recording it in the studio, it's our music. It's our special thing, like our new baby, you know. And we're working it and giving it new clothes and loving it and changing its diaper and doing all these things. And then it comes out into the world. And then we, it's not ours anymore. You know what I mean? It's not mine. It's going to be, you know, some kid in Buenos Aires in his bedroom is going to listen to it and decide whether he thinks it's great or whether he thinks it's bullshit, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so... It's an interesting transition, and I just, you know, I, for us it's been a very emotional thing, as it always is, to make music, and I feel like we made something that's new and, and feels for us really fresh. When we play it, it's fun, we're excited. <laughs> the same passion that in the beginning? Always. Always? Always. Very, a lot of, even more. More? More, because it's like, yes, we had that, the, the intensity that we had when we were young, but there's more depth now. You know, time gives you depth. Time gives you an energy that is, you know, more powerful. You know, you suffered more and you had more joy. I'm very proud of my boys, Josh, Chad, Flea. Those guys are amazing. Um, when I would hear their, what they were creating, I, I was blown away. Like, I had no idea that they could come up with something like that. I look forward to playing this music live so much. It's built for mm -hmm. the stage. <laughs> Problems, you, you decided to change your producer. Yeah. Why? We felt like we needed to change to get out. We were too comfortable. We were like doing the same method, the same process. We're always trying to grow as artists, but we were using the same method, like driving the same car every day. You just start to go the same way every time. Both producers are highly intelligent. I would honestly say that they're two of the smartest mm -hmm. men that I know. So the ability to hear the big picture of music, to analyze it and decide what's good and what could be better. Um, so they have similarities. But Danger Mouse is um, coming from a different world than Rick is coming from and has different techniques of recording in the studio, which we wanted. We wanted to change. You know, Rick is wonderful. There's, there's nothing but greatness about what he does. But we just needed a new taste, a new flavor, something that would put us out of our comfort zone, where we would be forced to look 
deeper in ourselves to find something new. And he's very good at that. This we needed to change, we needed to mix it up, we needed to do something different. So we got this new guy, you know, and he had a different process and a different idea about how to go about recording music. And it made us, you know, it made us try a different process and, and get uncomfortable and to put ourselves in a position where we would do something new that, that we didn't know what we were doing. It was a, a super interesting and intense high pressure situation because he wants to write a, a, a new song that day in the studio. So normally we write in a jam space at rehearsal, maybe I'm by myself at home. Danger Mouse wants to write in the studio that day. He's like, come to work, we're writing a song right now. I'm like, well, can I go practice first? He's like, no, come sing now. Brian, he asked us, he said, okay, yes, you wrote all the songs in our history, that's good. But let's go in the studio and let's use the studio not just as a place to document the songs that you wrote, but let's create new songs in the studio together and use the studio as an instrument. So let's build tracks bit by bit and try, try it that way. You've never done it before, let's try it and see what happens. And at first I thought, well, we're going to lose the magic of who we are if we do that. We play live. We bang it out, you know. And he said, yeah, but come on, just you never see something. You might make something new. And, and he was right. Like, I went in there and I thought, if it's not great in the first week, I'm leaving. You know what I mean? No more. Uh, you know, we get a different producer. But we went in the first day. It was just magical and beautiful and really fun. And, and we could tell that it was making us do something fresh and something exciting, you know. And it brings something special out of you that maybe you didn't even know you had. Yeah. You know, he finds something in you that you didn't even know you could do. And that's what a producer's job is. They, they have to get it out of you. They're going to, you know, tear you up a little bit to find out what you're made of. And... It was cool. I mean, it was difficult, but good things are supposed to be difficult. To me now, when we play this new music, it feels like it's exciting. It feels different. Like it gives me a different dance to do, a different way to feel, you know? And, um, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> about your dark necessities? Hmm, how about them? Yeah. Well, wouldn't you like to know? I don't know. Which are your dark necessities? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, darkness is a beautiful thing because it allows us to find our light. And when, uh, about 10 years ago, I was seeing a woman who was trying to get the darkness out of me with uh, Eastern Indian technique of hot oil on my forehead. And Jean Fashante, of all people, found out. And he's like, Anthony, no, don't get rid of your darkness. You need that for creativity. And I was like, he might be right. So when we feel the darkness, when we feel the black place inside of us, don't worry about it. It's, it's there for a reason. It's, it's part of our balance and, you know, whether it's with relationships or how you feel about yourself or whatever it is, you don't have to fight it. You can, you can just let it work for you. one is in one song he is in the song yeah 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 why because we wrote a song that takes some inspiration from music that he made uh, and we wanted to give him credit for inspiring the chords in this music mm -hmm. it's um the song is very different from his song but we use chords that he put together so we wanted to pay him but we also wanted his blessing and for him to play music on our song, which he said, of course, tell me where to you know, go, I'll be there. Wow. Yeah. So he blessed us. Thank you, Elton. <laughs> Do 
describe this moment of red hot chili peppers because the career of the band is very long and you have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. At this moment, how can you describe it? Um, at this moment, I'm just so thankful for the band. I just like, you know, muchas gracias a Red Hot Chili Peppers for being there for me. You know, it's like I started a, uh, a band with my friend 33 years ago, and here we are together still, and creating light and love and beauty, you know, and doing something that, that you know, that means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And, and being able to touch people's hearts, you know, or hopefully touch people's hearts, and to give from deep inside of myself to the world. And um, I'm just really grateful for it. And I just feel, you know, like a, a great surge of energy with this record. Like, you can't really fake that, you know what I mean? But like, I feel like we're going out to play and I just feel like a rocket ship about to blast off into outer space. <laughs> the name of the album which is your own getaway or the things you want to run away from well getaway is not always running away um, getting away is just to go to a place where you can have some peace where you can have a special environment to just be you're not working you're not driving you're not running away from you know so for me it's nature okay yeah the ocean surfboard paddle out that's that's my getaway uh, I try not to run away from anything um, I try to run away from running away you know what I mean like I try to go deep into like like if I'm feeling um, sad or I'm feeling a lot of pain over something I try not to run away to it I try to run into it to see what it is to understand it so I can learn and I can grow as a human being um, but I, you know, I think the getaway, if anything, it's just movement, always moving, you know. And sometimes movement means going out of yourself and going, you know, far away into the cosmos. And sometimes movement is to go back from the cosmos and come inside and be grounded, you know. So I'm just always trying to move in the getaway. You know, that's what it means to me. But like any word or any piece of art, that's, um, it's, you know, open for interpretation. <laughs> a healthy life to the life you used to have. Uh, have you ever compared these two lives you had? Um, yeah, of course. But I mean, my life is not like one day I said, oh, I'm going to have a healthy life today. Life moves and life changes and life, you know. And how was this change? I mean, that's a very intense question. You know, I mean, there are lots of things that happened in my life that made me change. Mm -hmm. There's things happening now making me change. Um, but I would say that, like in the early 90s, I actually, I went through something, I became very ill in like 1991, 92, right around then, 92. And uh, actually the first time we ever went to Argentina, we played down there, we played and we played uh, some big fat gig or something, I can't remember. We played some shows, and afterwards we got back on the plane and we're flying back up. It's our first time to South America, and we're flying back up to Los Angeles. And I got home and I was like, I don't feel good, I feel sick. And I was sick for like a year. And it was really like 
crazy. It changed my life completely. Like everything that I love to do, you know what I mean? I used to go out, with, out all night partying, playing basketball all day, jamming, doing drugs. I couldn't do anything. And it was the first time it was like the universe making me be still. You have to be still and you have to look inside yourself and you have to see what's important and you have to nurture that thing inside of you that's important. And, um, and that was a big change in my life, you know. So it's complicated. But it started giving me, you know, a spiritual path and uh, to really treasure the things that are important to me and to nurture those things. I have no regrets of my past life. I know it's important. It created me. Um, but I like my life today. Um, I get to it's share. Better? It's It's just different. Okay. Yeah. It's all, you know, it's ongoing. Work in progress. And which are the things that you learn about yourself? I think that I've learned that I don't like myself when I'm an asshole. I prefer myself when I'm a kind person. That's what I've learned. <laughs> Appetites of success. Still, I have appetites for creative success and for personal success, and you know, friendships. Um, the universe has blessed us with other kinds of success, and I, I try to accept it gracefully and without being too much of an arrogant, egotistical dickhead. You know, I try to be as down to earth as possible, but. We're blessed. We're very blessed. We have a great job, and we don't have to try that hard for success. It's just, we've been lucky like that. What I got, you got to give it to your mama. What I got, you got to give it to your mama. What I got, you got to give it to your dog. Till you do a little nothing, then you dig a little water. What I got, you got to get it, put it in you. What I got, you got to get it, put it in you. What I got, you got to get it, put it in you. Really with the feeling, don't. Mm. I want to watch them with you. <laughs> um, well, it was cold that day. It was a very cold day in England, and we got naked and put on socks, and people were looking at us like, what's the matter with you, you know? And um, we happily walked across the street, you know? Uh, it was a funny day. I take credit for the socks. Yeah. Um, I, th I think I came up with that. Flea maybe tries to take credit, but it's it's not true. For the Abbey Road recreation, that was actually our first manager called Lindy Getz, a, a small Jewish man from Brooklyn, a lovely fellow, and that was his idea. And it was about seven o'clock in the morning. It was cold. Seven o'clock. Yes, and oh there was an old lady on the on the sidewalk, and I I didn't want to bother her, but I was like. Does this bother you that we're taking our clothes? And she's like, it's nothing I haven't seen before. <laughs> she wasn't impressed. So, Looking at it, it makes me, uh, you know, it's a funny image, you know. I miss Hal out a lot. He was a beautiful man. He was a very kind, funny, artistic, awesome man. <laughs>
Oh, you had, where'd you get that? Doing? That was on the internet? <laughs> That's my old house that I used to live in. And it was my daughter's 10th birthday, uh, Clara. And she really loved the Spice Girls then. And um, we did a Spice Girls performance. I was Baby Spice, and John was Sporty Spice, and Anthony was Posh Spice. And we did um, Stop Right Now, Thank You Very Much, I Need Somebody With a Human Touch. And another one, Spice Up Your Life, Every Boy and Every Girl. Yeah, and the funny thing is that, like, we knew the Spice Girls a little bit. Yeah. I don't want to say any personal things, but knew them a little bit. And, and in this house, there was a staircase that came down here. You can kind of see it back there. Uh -huh. And my daughter was having a birthday party, and all the little girls were there, like 10, 15 girls or something. And we said, we have a special surprise for you. Sit in the chairs, and they're sitting in the chairs, and they're waiting. And we came down the stairs, you know, and the music started playing really loud, Spice Girls. Dun, 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 And we're coming down the stairs. And they thought, the girls thought it was the real Spice Girls. Oh. Because Clara told them, you know, my dad knows that it's Spice Girls, you know. <laughs> and, and again, they thought it was the real Spice Girls. And we came down, and we have, you know, beards, and, you know, it's us dressed like the Spice Girls, like girls. And they were, Hello. And they were, they were terrified. His daughter? <laughs> yeah. They were <laughs> absolutely I, scarred terrified. Scarred for life. Scarred for life. They were, they were in horror. <laughs> they were in absolute horror. <laughs> in your life who is Flea in my life yes on um, which are the highlights in his personality that you can describe him well it's indescribable uh, he's my brother um, we just have a past life bond you know where we have no choice you can't get rid of your brother you can get rid of a friend you can get rid of a husband but you can't get rid of your brother it's life so we're brothers his life yeah John. John. So, very special person to me, special person to many people, but my experience with John was one of the most wonderful and easiest people to make music with. We could sit down on the floor, John and I, and I could take out a piece of paper and I would say, okay, I wrote these words and he would like let, let me let me see those words and he would take the words and he would read them and he's like okay and then he would start to play something and I would start to sing it and I would say can you play something you know that that feels like this and he'd say okay let me try this and then we have a song so never did I meet someone who was so easy to write songs with and really good songs if I call him up and I'm like I'm very sad today he's like come over right now we're writing a song so I bring my sadness to John and sit down, get, get the notebook, you know, start writing your feelings, and then we have a song. Did you miss him? Um, I miss him, but I also accept the separate lives. Okay. Yeah, but I miss him. What did you <laughs> see when you saw this picture? It's funny to me. Um, you know, being a young boy is, is a beautiful thing because anything is possible. And when I met Flea yeah. ar around this time in my life, you know, the sky was the limit. You know, we could do whatever we wanted. And that's a nice feeling. <laughs> Have you ever listened to some uh, Argentinian musician? Um, yes, uh, lots of Argentinian music. Uh, I'd say my favorite Argentinian musician is Astor Piazzolla. Yes? Yeah, I, I love Astor Piazzolla. 
You ever get into it? Uh, maybe from you playing it in the van or yeah, something. Yeah, he plays the accordion, and it's like it's it's a it's it's a godly. To Have you ever seen this person in your life? <laughs> Can you, can you describe this man in six words or less? Um, that man, I remember that picture. Is that, that is that tenth grade? No. I think that might be senior year, bro. <laughs> After the, uh, you know, you take the picture early in the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Have you ever think about what would have been happened if you hasn't hadn't met? If I hadn't met Anthony? Yeah. Well, it's funny thing about me and Anthony is that there's a really like. <laughs> A chemistry between us that neither one of us have any control over and I think that I don't think at least for me I can I can't speak for him but I have no comprehension of what it is outside of I love him deeply and I feel a lot of love from him for me but like I feel like if I could understand it like the bizarre psychological phenomenon of whatever it is that the magic might leak out of it or something but I can't, I don't understand it, because it's just like this ongoing thing. It keeps moving and going, and it's, it's wild. It's out of control. It's out of control. I have thought of it, but it's impossible for me to imagine what the outcome would be. It would be so different. My life would be completely different. I think we've affected each other profoundly from the first day we met. Do you still think that you are a monster with two heads? Yes. Yes? Yes. It's a great definition. It's an honest definition. It's my nature, custom love, with no more Turn down, that's confusion. Hit the road, just keep moving. Double my fun, double my vision. Long hot look, the last distribution. Come so here, hustle there. Hustle me, bitch, and you best be aware. Say you in Argentina? Say you in Argentina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.